Welcome back everyone to part two of complex fractions. Last episode we talked about the first page which was a little bit more simple and introduced the concept of first simplifying the numerator and denominator, making sure there was no addition or subtraction between two separate fractions in either the top or bottom of the complex fraction. Then we're gonna change it to a division problem. We're gonna use the keep change flip rules which is essentially dividing fractions which is changing it to multiplication and then we simplify from there. Let's go ahead and apply it to some of these more complex, complex fractions, complex squared. So let's apply it here to this situation. We see that the numerator is fine. We're going to leave him alone, but the denominator has some work to be done. You'll see that 9 over x plus 2 over 3x is the problem at hand, and we want to have a common denominator between the two. You always want to check first, is one of the denominators a factor of the other one? And it is. x is a factor of 3x. We just have to multiply it by 3. In the very same way that if we had 9 over 9 plus 2 over uh, 27. Sorry, I meant to make this 3. If we had 9 over 3 and 2 over 9, 3 is a factor of 9 because you just have to multiply 3 times 3 to get 9. That's what you see here, 3 times x three times the other denominator. So we're just gonna multiply the top and bottom by three for this, and we get 27 over three X. And then of course the original problem, or the, the one we didn't need to change it, I should, uh, should say. And you see that now they have a common denominator. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna add the tops, 29 over, and we're gonna keep the denominator the same, three X. So now we have this simplified, as 29 over 3x. We have uh, two division symbols, but what I like to do is just consider this big one, the original one, okay, right here, and that is what we're going to change. We're gonna keep this guy the same, nine. We're gonna change this to multiplication, and then we're gonna flip the denominator to be the reciprocal, so we're gonna have 3x over 29. What I always do is I like to put this over one so I can multiply the top times the top, the bottom times the bottom, and I get 27x over 29. 29 is a prime number, so it can't be reduced or um, canceled with the top because there's no 29 in the top. So this becomes our final answer, 27x over 29. Let's go ahead and let's go to number eight. This is one where it seems impossible, but it's not. We have a squared in the top. We have that big divide sign. He's fine. The bottom is not fine though. Notice how we have two fractions here and the, the two denominators are not factors of each other. Five is not a factor of a and a is not a factor of five. So what we're gonna have to do is a little bit different. So we have four over five minus four over a. Now sometimes, uh, well not sometimes, all the time, you can always multiply the two denominators together to find a new common denominator. It may not always be the smallest, but it always works. In this case, it will also be the smallest. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna multiply this. We want there to be an A in this one. On the left, we want there to be an A in the denominator, so we're just gonna put an A there. But since we multiply it by A in the denominator, we also have to multiply A in the numerator. This one on the right, we see that we're missing a five now, okay? This doesn't have a five, so we're gonna go ahead and put a five there five times, but we also have to do that to the top. So what do these new fractions look like? It looks like 4a over 5a minus 20 over 5a. So we accomplished our first task, which is find a common denominator. Now we just have to simplify it. We're gonna have 4a minus 20 in the top. We can't simplify that any further. And we're just gonna have one denominator, which is 5a. So now we have this simplified. I should change that to green. Style, change it to green. There we go. Now that I have that simplified, I'm gonna go ahead and write it here. So I have 4a minus 20 over 5a. And again, it's okay if I have addition or subtraction, as long as it's not between two separate fractions like it is here. Here it's just in the numerator, which is fine. Okay, now we're gonna keep change flip. So we're gonna change this to a squared times 5a over 4a minus 20. If it doesn't have a denominator for one of the fractions, I like to put one just to keep me organized. Technically you don't need it, but again, I like to do the top times the top, 5a cubed 
bottom times the bottom. 4a minus 20 times 1 is just 4a minus 20. There's nothing to reduce here. Um, we, can't, we can factor out a 4 in the bottom, but there's no 4 in the top to cancel it with. And so this is going to become our final answer. 5a cubed over 4a minus 20. Let's see if we can get a tougher one here. Let's go on to, um, we'll do a number 11 and 12. And I think we'll finish with those ones. I think 11 and 12 are tougher than the ones at the bottom here. Uh, actually, definitely are. So let's go ahead and start with 11. We have a lot going on for both. This is the first one I think that we need to simplify both in the top and the bottom. So I'm going to use blue for this guy to simplify him. And then we're going to use purple to simplify him later. So we're going to reconvene in just a second. But first, I'm going to talk, talk to the numerator. So we have 25 over 12 plus x plus 1 over 4. Luckily for this, the 4 is a factor of 12. So we're just going to change the fraction on the right. We're going to multiply by 3. And when we multiply it by 3 to the top, notice how there's addition separating it. So we have to distribute. So this is going to become 25 over 12 plus 3x plus 3 over 12. The whole point was to have a common denominator, which we now do. So we can simplify the numerator by adding the 2. So we have uh, 25 plus 3 gives me 28 plus the 3x. I can't combine that over 12. Again, we can put it all over 12 because it has a common denominator. All right, so the numerator has been solved not solved, but simplified. And I'm keep in mind that I'm going to be dividing by whatever's in purple. Oh, sorry. I don't know why I changed it to pink. I should change this back to blue. Okay, so there's my blue. Now I'm going to purple. All right, same deal here. We have 1 over 18 minus x plus 1 over 36. We do not have a common denominator here, so we're going to have to multiply this guy by 2 because he is a factor of 36, the 18 that is. So I have 2 over 18, uh, what is that, minus, minus x plus 1, I don't need to change him, over 36. Oops, sorry, 36. So I just do the 2 minus the 1, leave the x as, uh, well, this actually is uh, in parentheses. So I need to subtract the x and the 1, so it gives me 1 minus x, and then over 36. I can apply the negative just to the numerator. You wouldn't subtract the 36. Think of the 36 as an in-place denominator that needs to stay there, okay? But anyway, I'm gonna move him up here, one minus x over 36. Now I'm ready to keep change flip. How does that work again? Well, I'm gonna keep this guy in blue. He's gonna stay the same. I'm gonna change this to multiplication and I'm going to, actually, hold on, I like using green. I'm gonna change this to multiplication, and I'm going to flip this to become the reciprocal. So it looks like this. 28 plus 3x over 12 times, I'm changing this to multiplication, and then flip 36 over 1 minus x. Okay, now the part is for canceling or reducing. So I can cancel uh, the 12 with 36, which gets reduced to 3. 12 goes into 36 three times. And that looks to be about it. 3 doesn't go into 28, so I can't factor out a 3. So what I'm going to do now is just multiply. So I have 28 plus 3x times 3. I'm just going to leave the 3 out in front, 28 plus 3x. And then I have this over 1 minus x. So this is actually a pretty ugly uh, fraction, but that's what's simplified. So uh, we're, we end up with that. Um, let's go ahead and do number 12. I know these problems are long. This is gonna be the last one for this video. This is probably the other hard one to do. So let's go ahead and start. Again, we'll, take, we'll do blue, <laughs> blue for the top and purple for the bottom. So we're gonna split this up. We need to simplify both the top and bottom first. So we have 16 over m minus three minus four over m minus four. The problem is we have an m minus three and an m minus four, so we're gonna have to account for both of those. We're gonna have to multiply this guy by m minus four, and if we multiply him to the bottom, we also have to multiply him to the top, m minus four in the top. 
I have an m minus 4 on the bottom. I need an m minus 3. Again, you can just multiply the two denominators together, and that's where I got this from, is I'm multiplying the two denominators together. So I need to multiply this guy by m minus 3. Let me extend this fraction. Extend this fraction, m minus 3, but I also have to multiply it to the top. And that's probably the toughest concept to know, is if you have a binomial, you have to multiply it by the other binomial to find a common factor. So now let's go ahead and rewrite this all in blue. So we have m minus 4 times 16 minus 4 times m minus 3 all over m minus 4 times m minus 3. Uh, super duper ugly uh, in my opinion, uh, but that is the reality of the situation we're in right now. Okay, let's go ahead and work on the bottom. And perhaps we can try to simplify the top a little bit uh, more in just a second. So we're going to um, take a look at this guy. We have 16 over m squared minus m minus 4 over m minus 3. Okay, what, as you might be able to tell, what I like to do is just make sure both denominators have both um, components multiplied together. So if I don't have an m minus 3 on the left, I need to put there, put one there, but that requires multiplying both the top and bottom. Same thing over here, I'm missing an m squared, so I need to add that there, multiply it, and I also have to multiply it to the top. So I have m squared being multiplied in the top and bottom. Now, what does this become? I'm gonna change this all to purple. I have 16 m minus 3 minus m squared times m minus 4 in the top, and this is all over m minus 3 times m squared. Whew. Okay, now what I can do is I can um, keep change flip. So the one I'm going to keep is the blue. I'm going to keep this one the same. I'm going to change this divide sign, which is here. Imagine that this is my compound fraction, my complex fraction. And then I'm gonna flip the bottom one. I'm gonna <laughs> rewrite it real fast. So I'm gonna have 16 m minus four, minus four times m minus three over, nope, sorry, yes, m minus four times m minus three. I'm gonna move this over because I'm gonna multiply now and I'm gonna change this to the reciprocal. So that's m minus three times m squared reciprocal of that, and we have 16 m minus 3 minus m squared times m minus 4. Okay, so this is the new problem. Uh, this one is pretty tough. So one, some things we can cancel right now is this m minus 3 with this m minus 3, um, but that's it. The problem we have here is we have subtraction here and here. So it's not a fraction, but it is a subtraction. So that's a problem because um, we're gonna have an issue with, um, we're gonna have an issue canceling. You can't just cancel it. Um, so we'd have to multiply this whole thing on the top by the whole thing on the bottom and distribute, and it's gonna be a big mess. So I'm actually gonna handle that in a part three of this video, but essentially that's the basics of keep change flip. This is gonna require some uh, additional factoring, which is uh, gonna be a little bit problematic. So if you wanna see that, stay tuned for this problem. Otherwise, uh, thank you for watching. and <laughs> uh, Stay tuned for an unexpected part three of this video.